Hi there, Robin here, and in this video we're going to be talking about Mackie's audio interface, the Producer 2.2, with two channel in, two channel out audio interface capabilities running at 24 bits and 192 kilohertz. Software included is going to be Pro Tools first, Waveform OEM, and Traction. This unit packs a punch when it comes to features. We're going to be covering all of those features and benefits in this video. So here we are. This is the Mackie Onyx Producer 2.2. So right off the hop, is it worth talking about? Absolutely, I wouldn't actually have it here if I didn't think it was worth talking about. Uh, this is very important. The unit does have a very good audio interface connection to the computer. The processor built inside is designed for 24 bits and 192 kilohertz. That's very important. It also offers MIDI in and out capability on the back side of it, which is another big plus for a unit. Now the producer features two actual dedicated inputs, which are going to record on each of its individual channels, channel one and channel two. Uh, the important part with Mackie's unit is that they offer high Z on both options. So if you're going to use a string instrument like a guitar, that's going to be a big, big plus when it comes to what you can do with this unit. So the producer offers two independent channels, line one, line two, going into your computer. Uh, big benefits to having it set up this way is that on the producer, it's not a dedicated line. This line here can be either for a guitar, a microphone, or a standard line input. You repeat the functions again on line two. It can be again for a guitar, a microphone, or a standard line input. That gives you a lot of advantages. You can use this machine in a lot more ways than you can most other units in its price point. Mackie's also, they're an audio company first, so they're looking at their audio interface uh, differently than some of the other companies who are sound card companies first. They look at things like having those high Z functions on both their units. They're also looking at having the ability to use anything internally with this machine. Because they're open-minded in that sense, it's going to be a lot easier and a lot more versatile. So a lot more people will buy this and be happy with it at the end. The gain controls go from a minimum to a maximum. We do have to run it at about 90% to actually get a good pickup. I'm 10 inches away from the condenser microphone that I'm using. And again, not to overdo it with the microphone, we've particularly used just a standard pile PDMIC70, which is a reasonably priced condenser style microphone. That being said, I've also not added any filters onto it. So this way you're hearing the audio interface and the background noise that's in the room. The audio interface itself is very clean. The microphone does a very nice job picking up my audio. Uh, but again, if I'm not going to use any uh, noise compression system or any background suppression, you're going to have the natural sounds of a studio, which in my case is a showroom and with a big air conditioner and heater on the roof with a large van blowing all the time. What software comes bundled in with this? Well, it comes with three packages. So you do get your Pro Tools first. You also get Waveform OEM, and they also include Traction. That's all included in this package when you buy the actual unit. So that's very important to know. Uh, again, when we cover all the features in the front, again, gain controls for the first two. Then you're going to move over and you've got a mix option. You can either listen to your audio interface directly. So right now, my headphones are plugged in here. My microphone's plugged in here. The audio, besides going out the USB cable to the computer, is also coming across directly to my headphones. I can use this knob to mix between the headphones and the audio track on the computer back and forth. It might be a backtrack that I'm playing. It may be just the fact that I need to listen to everybody else who's on a, on a Zoom call, let's say, and I've decided this is the way I want to do it. Uh, or it could just simply, I want to hear my own voice through the system. That's up to you, but you can dedicate it to just the actual computer or just the actual audio interface itself for your choice. Two knobs here. The big knob is for monitors. So those are in the back. I'll show you that in a moment where you can plug in your speakers, your powered speakers, or send it to an amplifier, that sort of thing. But that's where this control is going to be used for. The knob located right on top of the actual headphone jack, which is a quarter inch, is for the headphones itself. I can control that. This has no reference on the recording, just the actual level that I'm listening to the unit at. The body of the unit is all metal, so it's very durable. You can stuff it in a bag, not to worry about it uh, like anything Mackie makes is very strong if we take a look at the back now 
So here we are. This is the back of the actual unit. We've got our 2.0 standard USB connection. By the way, this is the same plug as a printer cable would be. So if you need something longer than the four foot, six foot one in the box, you can just use a USB printer cable. Uh, so if you're shopping for one, try not to look for one for an audio interface. Look for one that's USB 2.0 for a printer and it'll be a lot easier to find one. Uh, this little slot here is a security slot. This is for putting these little locks on it that, well, you know, so people can't steal it. Then you have your MIDI in and out. So, uh, again, you can buy products that are just MIDI adapters for USB, but once you buy one of these, it's built into this unit right here. Then you have your line outputs. These are the two quarter inch that I was mentioning earlier. They are balanced and unbalanced, so it doesn't matter what kind of studio monitors you have or amplifier you want to run it off to, you can do that straight from here. Outside of that pretty much covers it. When it comes to functionality and overall viewing of an audio interface, I'll be honest, a lot of times it's boring. It's not like a mixer. It doesn't have a million knobs and buttons on it to talk about and show what everything's doing. Everything you're going to do with this machine is going to happen on your computer. So talking about the computer, any standard computer will do because that's the whole point of this. This is doing all the heavy lifting inside this box to actually get the information processed. That's why it has 24 bits and 192 kilohertz. It does all the work. Your computer is just simply going to take that and record it onto the software, layer it down on your actual software. So having it in here is good. And again, 24 bits and 192 kilohertz. I know I've mentioned it now like three times. It is one of the most important things when buying an audio interface. If you're buying an audio interface, besides being easy to use, it's got to be smooth and it's got to be detailed in its recording quality. And that's what you get when you get to a number of 24 and 192. Uh, it's a new benchmark for companies to achieve, especially if you're recording music, because you're going to want to go back afterwards and you're going to want to filter it and do all kinds of stuff to it and add everything you want and, and play around with it. And you really need a high quality track to start with. So this way, when you do make any modifications, it's still going to sound great. So well, that's going to pretty much wrap it up for the producer 2.2. Uh, it is great value for everything you do get with the machine. Uh, like any actual audio interface, you're going to have to practice with it a little bit. You're going to have to tweak it with the software, and you're going to have to get comfortable with it. But remember, you can run dynamic microphones. You can run condenser microphones because it does have the 48-volt option to turn on here. Uh, you can also run ribbon-style microphones. But more importantly, you can also just plug your guitar straight into the unit. Hit that high Z button and you're all set ready to record. That pretty much wraps it up for this video here. I'd like to say I hope it worked out for you and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.